Hey, Wayne Fox, and today I have a tip about the auto mask feature of the adjustment brush, something that I haven't seen others demonstrate, so it might be a little unique and something you haven't seen before. This technique is sometimes really effective and, and so much so that I'll pop out of Photoshop using the um, camera raw filter feature of Adobe Photoshop CC and actually do the mask and create the adjustment inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, if it doesn't work, it takes such a short amount of time to do it that you can always just give up on it and go back and do a normal mask in Photoshop. But when it does work, it's really, really cool. So let me show you what I do. So what I want to show uh, regards to the adjustment brush and the auto mask function, this image works pretty good, but I would make, let's make a couple of quick changes. I'm actually going to darken it down a little bit and raise my contrast a little bit. Okay, because I know where I want to end up, add a little bit of vibrance, a little bit of clarity. Now what I'm wanting to do is find and isolate these white trunks of these trees and make them a little bit lighter so they look a little more like they do when you're walking around in the evening light in an aspen grove. The, the trunks literally almost take on a glow, really kind of cool. And typically what we would do if we were doing this in Lightroom or Photoshop is we would you know, we'd create an adjustment brush, we'd kind of get some density, and then we'd use the auto mask feature, so as we painted um, the tree trunks, you know, and it works pretty good. Um, one problem, though, is if, we, if you watch as we paint over this, I'm going to paint over this a few times, and let's go down here and paint over this a few times, and let's just zoom in. You'll notice how it's gone outside a little bit. And the reason it's done that is because as soon as my cursor moves into this dark area, it then begins to sample that color. So what Auto Mask is doing is it's sampling the color directly underneath your cursor. And it's then following and staying in similar tones and colors until it finds an edge, then it stops. So in this case, we would want to um, be a little more careful and not move our cursor into this. But in, this, in the, this example, what I'm really wanting to do is, is get all of these tree trunks, and I just can't imagine painting them in. And so typically, you would go to Photoshop to do that. But in some images like this one, where all the grays and whites are pretty well isolated to the trunks, you can use the feature of the Auto Mask tool in a little different way and almost to the, create the same effect as a full-blown mask in Photoshop. So to do that, uh, I'm going to go and turn my size as large as it will go, I turn my flow as large as it will go, turn my density as large as it will go, leaving auto mask on. I'm going to find a gray tone right in here. You notice that my brush now covers the entire, uh, let's get rid of the feather, but it covers pretty much the entire document. And if I just click one time about here, you'll notice how I was able to isolate all of those tree trunks in that one click. What I didn't realize before, but this process that Auto Mask uses is non-contiguous. So it will look wherever the brush covers for the same color and move from those points to the edges. And all I really miss were these really bright highlights right there. Well, none of these leaves have bright highlights like that either, so I can just click there once and add to it. So in two clicks, I was able to select, um, in two clicks, I was able to select all of these tree trunks, and as you can see, I don't have much selected in other areas of the image. Once I've made that selection, I don't really need to control the density by the flow because I can control that by using my adjustments. Let's turn the mask overlay off by hitting the O key. And now let's begin to work our adjustments. And we're just going to bring the, the brightness of these aspens up a little bit. Now as I look at this, I go, well, you know, I'd really like this tree here. Um, to be a little bit lighter. Uh, you know, these are nice and they've got a nice dimension to them. And I might want to even take the trouble and paint a little bit of a highlight side of this to simulate these. But if I just wanted to lighten this tree up so it's a little lighter than the others, I could use a similar idea. Let's create a second adjustment brush. The only difference is we're going to change the size. So it's just a little wider than the tree. But instead of uh, if I drag down, my problem is, well, let's turn the overlay back on. If 
I drag down my problem as I can't as soon as I hit that dark area you'll see how I went uh, the brush went outside the lines um, or outside of the tree trunk so to avoid that let's get rid of that and to avoid that rather than dragging I'm just trying to isolate this trunk so I want to make just a it's like a mask in Photoshop it's not really a a burn or a dodge or anything like that that you typically use in the dress brush so I'm going to click and each time I click I'm going to make sure that I'm in the white regions now if I get to a region like this I can drag but as soon as I'm afraid of hitting one of those dark regions on the trees, I'm going to stop and I'm going to not drag through it. So, you know, like there I'm getting a little nervous. Now as I get down to the bottom here, there's a lot more of these little dark regions. So I'm going to be pretty careful. And, and let's undo that. Looks like, let's try right over here. Let's go with a little bit. And that's not working too good. There we go. So now I've got a second brush. Turn the overlay off and now I can bring that tree up just a little bit lighter so it's a little closer to the other ones as far as density. And you know I might even want to do it to this same thing to this tree here. So we'll make a new brush, a little smaller, start clicking. Now one problem you got is that on your first click it's really hard to tell exactly what you're clicking on you notice I'm going outside on these just a little bit but I'm not too worried about that because I'm not, I'm not going to change the density enough to really notice all right and let's just speed things up here you'll notice I kind of went outside the lines a little bit because this the trunk here is also white pretty easy to just um, go in and then change it to the erase tool and let's leave auto mask off on this and just kind of clean that up I could clean these up so you know masking is always a matter uh, you know even in Photoshop is a matter of you know refining and and so sometimes when you do this you have a little bit of cleaning up you might want to do but considering that I'm not really lightening this very much, I don't think any of that's going to show. Let's hit O, and then let's just take that up a little bit. All right, so there we go. So real quickly, um, there's the before we started, and now watch as these trunks lighten up. Now with this same image, I can show a couple of other things you can do with the same technique. Uh, in this particular image, you may decide that you want to pull these yellows up a little bit. So typically you'd use the target adjustment tool and you would go in and say, okay, let's lighten the yellows. We'll drag it up. Let's darken the greens. And then let's take and add a little saturation to the yellows. And you know, that's pretty good. I mean, that's uh, and, you know, a couple of quick clicks, you've been able to kind of put a little contrast between the yellow and the greens. But you can use this same... Oh, I have an update to Creative Cloud. Lovely. Uh, you can use this same technique to, do, to have a little more control over that. So let's go back here. And we're going to... I'm going to turn that one off. I'm going to create a new brush. And we're going to do the same thing. Size really big. No feather. Auto mask is on. Let's turn the overlay on with hitting the O key. Let's try to find that yellow right there and we'll click it. And you notice how I was able to isolate all, all, just almost all the yellows in the image. Now, if I take a look in here, it's like, oh, I kind of miss those yellows. So let's add those. And there's a bunch that are sort of yellow, but maybe not. And so we'll click those. And real quickly, I was able to just get all the yellows isolated. One way you can kind of see that is if you want to go down and you want to just take your saturation all the way out. Everything colored is what's in the mask and it's a little easier to see if you take the color out. So now let's go back and let's uh, turn the overlay off and then let's instead of, let's just add a little yellow to those yellows. Let's bring the, them up a little bit brighter and add a little saturation. Now we're going to do one more new brush and we're going to do just the opposite. We're going to 
try to find our greens. Let's hit overlay and all these dark colors. Okay. And very quickly we found most of those. Let's hit O. Turn that off. And let's take the greens down just a little bit. And you know, we maybe, you know, you might want to desaturate the greens a little so there's less color to them. In my case, I think I actually like the greens and the yellow, so I'm not going to pull them up a little bit. So after our um, using the same technique, we were able to go from here to here and bring our greens and yellows in play um, just really quickly. Now this doesn't always work. Sometimes you have issues where the colors are too close together and you get in and you look and there's some, you know, some, some problems and oh, I don't want to do that. There are some problems uh, and you look and you can maybe see some weirdness going on. So I always look at this pretty close once I do it. This is a really old, uh, fairly low res file. I don't know why I've got my info on. There we go. Um, but, you know, if I go back to the beginning, I should have done a snapshot. There's where we started. And really with about, you know, three or four, you know, well, let's say probably 20 clicks of the mouse, we created all these masks and we're able to get to that, you know, pretty quickly. Now, you can't do it all the time, but boy, when you can, it sure is cool and it sure is fast. So just to demonstrate a couple of other creative ways you can do this um, or things with it, uh, and not that I would do it on this image, but I could use the same technique. For example, I could create a brush, same idea, turn overlay on. I could just start clicking in areas like this. I could get the greens. I got to be careful with that color there. And so pretty quickly, I was able to isolate the background of this image, which I could turn down. If I wanted to, I could do a new brush. And let's just get the greens overlays on. That pretty well got all the greens. Okay. And now we could take the greens. Let's say that they're a little too saturated. Pull those down just a little bit. And the cool part is, is because I did it this way, I mean, this is just kind of a, in reverse, um, I could pull this down a little bit more. And then, you know, I could actually lighten the flower up a little bit or add saturation to the flower. Uh, so if I added a lot of saturation to the flower, then I could go back to my adjustment brushes and pull, you know, kind of reverse that saturation back out. So it's kind of a, you know, mask in reverse kind of a concept. In this particular shot, it was easier to, to isolate everything but the flower instead of trying to isolate the flower with a technique. So there's a lot of cool ways that you can use this idea, and you can see that it's like making straight masks in Photoshop a lot of times where you're just trying to, you know, you're not really gradually burning and dodging. You're just trying to take a, a region and make it darker, lighter, less or more saturated, et cetera. Um, so anyway, it's, it's definitely worth a try. Um, hope you like the idea. Let me know if you do. Thanks.